Hi, this is Dr. Andrew Chrysler, Teaching Communication Systems. In this video, I'm going to assume that you've just finished watching the previous videos on bandwidth efficient amplitude modulation. So you just saw how to make amplitude modulation more efficient. So the first way was to do single sideband amplitude modulation, and this was an ideal case of cutting our DSP signal into exactly two different upper and lower sidebands. Then we looked at quadrature amplitude modulation, which makes the modulation more efficient by sending two different messages at the same time. Then we looked at sort of a compromise case for the single sideband modulation, which was the vestigial sideband modulation, which allows a little bit of the lower or upper sideband to transmit and all of the other sideband to transmit um, by applying two different filters which are complementary to each other. Now all three of these have something in common, which is that you're going to need to have some kind of carrier synchronization or coherent detection. So the meaning of this is that we have, have our signal, we've modulated it, transmitted it through a real channel, there is distortion, noise, real effects, and our final recovered signal uh, has, has undergone some transformation based on the channel, right? We may have had a time delay, we may have had a Doppler effect, we may have had a phase delay. So ideally we would demodulate with this, right? We'd just demodulate with the exact signal that came out of the transmitter. However, due to the real channel effects, we may need to demodulate with something that looks like this. So we need to have some other cosine carrier wave that uh, matches exactly whatever the real channel just did to it. If we don't do that, right, it's going to be very difficult. And we saw that this asynchronous demodulation, so if you don't have that coherent demodulation, right, this could be quite disastrous. You may not be able to recover your real message at all for a QAM, and it might cause you quite a bit of error for either the VSB or SSB. So there's a couple different solutions that you could apply to kind of account for the fact that these real channels are going to lead to distortion and you need to somehow demodulate with this. One of those is to first send a, a pilot carrier that's shaped like, like this. So just a pilot carrier of your wave that's not being modulated by the message. And so this would allow you at your receiver to kind of take a narrowband filter, find this, Right, so you'd be able to kind of filter out whatever happened and be able to get just this cosine wave uh, using a filter. And you'd be able to, at, at your um, receiver, you'd be able to come up with a good, a good cosine wave that matches this. And that would be by taking a little bit of pilot or a little bit of this signal that went through the channel by itself, it went through the distortion, and then you have your, your new cosine wave. So you could, you could kind of recover this and then use that recovered pilot to, to synchronize with your local oscillator. And then you could recover your original signal and you would be able to get away without those um, kind of detrimental effects. Now the second solution would be to do something like pass your received signal through a nonlinear device and then filter out uh, this, this term. And it should be, uh, you know, this, this term is going to have undergone some distortion. And so whatever that distortion is, you should be able to filter out that carrier term plus the distortion and use that to synchronize with the local oscillator. However, uh, both of these, right, both of these processes require some kind of filter or narrowband filter, uh, which could adaptively adjust to any of that distortion. So any of that uh, omega C plus some extra distortion. So all of these require some kind of narrow band pass filter and something that can kind of adapt to whatever this uh, plus or minus omega might be. And so all three of our bandwidth efficient forms are going to require this. And therefore, one of the final things that we're going to cover uh, in the chapter four of the, the reference textbook is the phase lock loop, which could be thought of as this kind of combination of filter and adaptive, uh, adaptively, adaptive filter component, which can be used to synchronize these terms 
and recover your original message. So that's going to be one of the final videos in the chapter four series is a video on the phase lock loop, which is going the phase lock loop is something that's used in almost all modern communication systems, traditional ones as well. And it's used to be able to recover your message even when you have undergone some distortion due to the, the real channel. And it's especially important for all of these uh, efficient forms of modulation because if, if they are not recovered coherently, you could have a lot of problems getting a understandable message without that coherent recovery.